안녕하십니까 유튜브 시청자 여러분 반갑습니다 타임프롬 키미세븐입니다 네, 오늘 저희는 독사의 CEO인 얀 에덕스님을 모시고 인터뷰를 진행을 해보겠습니다 네, 얀 에덕스님 반갑습니다 Great pleasure to have you, Mr. Thank you. Eddux. Thank you. 감사합니다. <laughs> so please introduce yourself for people watching this video. So uh, my name as well, is Jan Edox. I'm the CEO of the company Doxa, uh, a space watch brand specialized in diving. The brand exists since nine, uh, 1889. And uh, so I have really the honor to bring Doxa now uh, on the international markets and mm -hmm. just now uh, also arriving here in South Korea. We're pretty much certain that we will succeed also, uh, but to bring it also now to the Asian markets. So, and uh, thanks to support of our local partners, we are here today. So, you were appointed as a CEO of DOXA in 2019. So. Could you explain the situation at the moment when you became the CEO of Doxa? Ah, so it's uh, as a first of all the owner's family, Jenny, uh, the family Jenny. I know them since a certain while already. Oh, really? Beforehand, driven mm -hmm. approach. We discussed about the future of Doxa, mm -hmm. and uh, then we have decided to bring it a step forward altogether. And based on my small experience in the watch industry since 25 years in the band of the international network, yeah, I'm just blessed. I feel blessed. We could bring together a great team. We found international most valid partners to bring DOXA to the territory. And, uh, and here we are. And uh, we're still hungry. We still move on. There's still a lot to do. But the last four years were pretty much uh, a big, big success, success already, yes. So, uh, what was the top priority to rebuild the brand? Doxa was one of the first brands in 2001 starting to sell Doxa online. Oh, really? Yeah. 2001? 2001. Okay. And today, when you see the bridge, there's a controversy in what Doxa does compared to the market by its own in the watch industry. Today, a lot of watch brands, they try to walk the bridge to the online business. Yes, and we do the opposite. We come from the online. More than 20 years ago. And more exactly, and we may shake hands with the other brands on the bridge, mm -hmm. but we just walk the other direction. Okay. And we're going to the offline market, really very exclusive. The product now to the end consumer where a certain level of touch and feel is possible. You need this today. Mm -hmm. uh, but beforehand, the, the, the main decision to bring Doxa now to the next level okay. is a very simple. Mm -hmm. Because going back into the history in the in 1960s, end of the 60s, 70s, where Doxa got no, especially in the United States, these collectors, they're aging. And now it is really time to bring this wonderful heritage to a next generation. Once you're considered in our industry like a museum brand, Everyone will clap on your shoulders. Oh, this is beautiful what you do, but no one is thinking to buy. Okay, now it's time to move on. And we see with the first result, Doxa has by far the legitimacy to pass it on for the next generations. And the collectors are very pleased that the rich tradition is being moved forward. What are the points uh, that the watch fans or watch collectors of Doxa are keen on and Doxa watches, do you think? What is the own charm of Doxa? Uh, functionality. Functionality. And know-how. Know-how. Yeah. Know-how in the water. We don't need 20 minutes to explain it here. Okay. And we don't need to explain it in 1967. And it was clear already at the time to end consumers. 
And today we do still the same. Dogs are stays in the water or around the water, but we're not trying to please pilots. Okay. We're not trying to please the car industry. Mm -hmm. We know where our home is. So let's move into watches. So we start with the Korean edition first. Okay. So where the ideas of the Korean edition come from and uh, what was the biggest cons concern of uh, making Korean edition? As a concern, there was none. No. No. So we knew what we do, we know how to build watches. If the product we're launching today has perfect mix between today's knowledge, mm -hmm. producing watches also in the regard of the forged carbon. Okay. Mentioning the forged carbon, when you look really also the sapphire glass box. Mm -hmm. 44 grams weight, cask certified. And then additionally here, in a small decent way, the flag of South Korea. But also on top what you get on the back is really the playful of the Korean symbol, but also the forced yes. on the case back, on titanium case. Mm -hmm. It's so comfortable to wear. It's a piece of art, forged carbon. And uh, also coming out was uh, a nice rubber strap, FK mm -hmm. strap. And there has been a very nice development together here with the partner. And again, it fits so nicely on the wrist very easy to wear. So we're very happy to be here to launch this. Fantastic. Good. Thank you. As I know, the Korean Special Edition is limited edition. Yes. Of 30 pieces. Yes. Do you think it's enough? The main business stands, of course, not in selling the 30 pieces. It's about what happens afterwards. Okay. It's really on the top of a pyramid to show the capability in, in, in partnerships what can be done. And for me, my personal opinion is if, if, if you do limited edition, then do real limited edition. And 30 pieces, this is limited for me. Recently, Sub 200T has been released. Yes. And so could you give us some details about this watch? Okay, the Sub 200T is just a logical consequence Mm -hmm. So now, in the last four years, we went to the market and the 42 is absolute, a very good size. Mm -hmm. You go to the US, to Europe, also here in Asia. Okay. But also, generally, you saw a development that the sizes are going back. I remember when 45, everyone was wearing the really the big junk watches, you can mm -hmm. say. And that's going back to, um, to 39 millimeters. So that was one of the main reasons to wait also to give the, an adapted product for the Asian market by its own, and it makes sense. Okay. We launched the first time ever the 200T also in the Sea Emerald. Sea Emerald. Yes, mm -hmm. green color. And every color of Doxa has its own name. For example, orange since ever is professional. Yes. The limited edition of, of uh, Yem Korea, the, the, the black is Shark Hunt. Shark Hunter. And so now we carry seven colors. So it's not only that we came to the market with the 39 millimeter, we brought even a new color with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a sea emerald. Also here, the, the response has been really, uh, I don't want to call it phenomenal, the sounds it's so good, but it was very good. How's the response in the United States or Europe? So the United States as of today is our main market. Okay. Yes. And uh, when we built up also the response, more than positive. So for the moment, we are now end of May and it's over. Oh, really? Yeah. So the next, so it's not limited. So the next bunch comes in by end of June. Mm -hmm. It was very good. And also in the approach when, when four years ago, first we rebuilt up the business in the US, then we came to Europe, mm -hmm. then we went to the Middle East, mm -hmm. and now we're approaching Asia. Okay. And this we do on purpose. Not that we think we could have sold to everyone right away all over the world, but really take it step by step. And the 200T is just really the legitimate product in coming to age. So in go going further into the details of the 200T, what I explained also of the Sea Emerald mm -hmm. and the, the, the fit of the 39 millimeter, not only because of Asia, also in the rest of the world, but amazingly, when you look about the thickness here, 
it's 10.7 millimeter. 10.7. 10.7. The Beat of Rice bracelet mm -hmm. is still the one, the original of 1967. Mm -hmm. People may say it come and goes with Doxa. It's part of the DNA and it's so much of actual and it's very comfortable to wear. And then also we have adapted also the folded clasp. Okay. With the extension. Mm -hmm. So all the key elements of Diver's Watch still fully implemented and of course for the image of the sea emerald the grill in the sunray dial in some executions we have two variations for example the orange okay we have the iconic color yes to be able to offer to the end consumer oh you can go back in 67 with the iconic orange or you may take a decision for the sunray okay but as the sea emerald did not exist in 67 no, there's no iconic. Mm -hmm. I I think it's also unisex in certain markets. It's not all. Yeah, I think so. Yes. I will agree with you. Yeah. Okay, we can talk about uh, Sub 600T now. Yes. It has a different look yes. compared to the others. Yes. So what is the uniqueness of this Sub 600T? So, first of all, the Brad Doxa has Meanwhile, between just being known for its solidity, the technical functionality, okay. Doxa has one simple USB. You don't need to read Doxa on the dial. You recognize it right, okay. right away. That's the feedback. And the 600T uh, came up in the 80s. Okay. And has a functionality in the design of the thickness to be water resistant to 600 meters. Mm -hmm. When you go to 600 meters, your design technical approach is changing a little bit. Yes, because we need the most thicker glass exactly. and cases. The thicker glass, the cases and all this. Mm -hmm. And if you go, we have the 300T also being water is 1,200 mm -hmm. meters. Mm -hmm. But this product is also part of the history being adapted to today's uh, taste and, uh, and demand. And uh, I'm happy to have here and there exceptions in our collection it's good mm -hmm. uh, it's also to move on not choose to go back in history books and product watches from 67 68 which is nice okay uh, but just also to move forward and the 600t is for me really a very nice functional watch also when you talk i'm not familiar with the local pricing in one you know 600t the 600 stands for water resistance to 600 200 T stands for 200 meters. Absolutely. Yes. So we may say in Switzerland, no rule without an exception. <laughs> All what you see whenever you have the number on the dial, okay. how, how, how the water resistant this, mm -hmm. but the 300 T, that's the only one, is 1200. Yes, yes. Resistant. Why? We didn't find any reason why it finishes. <laughs> And, and going back to the 600T, of course, the challenge, what I mentioned before, is of course the thickness. Yes. Also with the glass, mm -hmm. the playful. But here also, the also implemented in the six colors, but it's despite of size of the watch, it's very comfortable to wear. Mm -hmm. And also the indication of the metal bracelet, I find it beautiful. It is also the details when you go through you also see the shape here polished and brushed and we just need to bring it on the wrist. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, people may say, oh, this is too thick, you know, but it's not. But you need to put it on the wrist to try out. And it's also for me, going back in the design of the 80s, also for me, this is a piece of art being part of the history of Toxa. It's really interesting to see Doxa Army, which is based on the watches that was supplied to Swiss military more than 50 years ago. Yes. So is there an interesting story behind this watch? watches the people don't know well? Oh, firmly. Really? And even the people, even the Swiss people didn't know. Even Swiss people didn't know. Mm -hmm. But 68, the 
Doxa was chosen by other brands to become the official uh, supply watch for the Swiss army divers. But people in 68, being in the Swiss army, they didn't know that the Swiss army diver existed. Oh, really? It was secret. 21, end of 21, the Ministry of Defense released a declassification after 50 years. The Swiss army divers, they were trained to dive in the rivers. Okay. And it's not about diving, they were miners. They go once in a river against the current, two meters deep. Mm -hmm. The target is with dynamite on your back. Mm -hmm. Not being seen at the time it was to go before the first enemy line. Okay. And behind the end of first enemy line to blow up the bridges for supply. And this you can't learn in ocean. For Europe. No, I see. Yeah. So it was kept secret. Mm -hmm. Not going further in the neutrality of Switzerland, of course. We're very proud of it. The original army model came out to the divers, came out of orange dive. Mm -hmm. That was really numbered like the equipment, like the gun. And the diver, when he stopped, he needed to give the watch back. So it passed. Yes, yes. Hands. So there was also a book. It was part of the military um, equipment. Beginning of the 70s, this design came up, which was sold, offered, also to the army. Mm -hmm. uh, being surrounded by the we found doctors at the time. Uh, doctors, yeah, okay. looking, uh, taking care about the divers mm -hmm. ah. and the wrist. And uh, as the people wanted to buy in memory a watch from the army, they couldn't get the other one. And then this design got developed and was also worn then, of course, by the army divers because it was a limited edition, the first. And this was really an honor then commemorated in 22. Yeah, it was 22 when we launched in the army and uh, because we could finish the, the story learning. Very, and we found, we launched it in New York, limited edition, and we found the old manger still alive. We brought him to, uh, to this uh, function in a very decent, respectful way. And he was talking about how they got trained at the time. And then, for example, he told a story when they lost the watch in the lake, then everyone else tried to help to find the watch. So, uh, yeah, hard touching stories, but real stories, yeah. And so in this honor, we're super happy. And this is a, a product which stands out in my point of view and is linked with, uh, with this beautiful part of the Doxa history going back over 50 years, as I said, yeah. So for now, so all products are diver watches. Yes. So do you have any ideas or consider developing new products like a classic or retro looking watches in the future or? As being a long time in the watch industry, never say never. <laughs> never say never. Yeah. Uh, no, definitely not for the moment. Because in the history of Doxa, if you go back, also 1920, 1930. Then have been developments also with classical watches. This is the core range with story stands. Classical, once we have an anniversary, can be 100, 250, whatever the, the mm -hmm. realm, then you may go back in a limited edition to other the times back. But first let us do the work here. This is new for the market and don't try to please everyone. Stay true to you, what you are known best for. And this, today, this is the What about the small complications like GMT? Do you have an idea to develop the, the GMT watch with the sub series? So, this is something which existed already, yeah. but the demand for a G GMT as it existed already is out in the market, as we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, to this, I'm not saying no. 
uh, as far as I may say more no to classical watches, but the GMT uh, is closer in our thoughts and minds. So Clive Kostler, this is a beautiful property. In honor of Clive Kostler, uh, this has taken us more than two years in development. More, even more. So first of all, Clive Kostler, in, in his honor, he passed away So years ago, three now. We commemorated his achievement and what he did for dogs. What did you? He was the main ambassador in the literary world. He has his own book. He sold over 100 million books. And in his book, he has his famous character, Dirk Pitt. And Dirk Pitt was wearing a doxa. Why these dogs are coming in his books? Because he has a personal, deep-rooted affection to doxa. I could talk now for two hours. So shortly become, he became famous. He was working in a dive show. He was working in advertising before. He was on his way to become this, uh, this uh, high regard writer. And, but at the same time, he promoted the dive shop. And then as a thank you, what he did for the dive shop, he, he, as a gift, he got a doxa. He was fascinated. So he brought doxa into his books. When we, made the special edition in his honor, which we launched last year, mm -hmm. in the New York Yacht Club. Okay. Because the same time as he had in his books, this Dirk Pitt, he also had this Numa in his books, the National Other Water, National Under Marine Water Agency, which in the books, also they discovered boats, but also in the real life, he was looking at the deck shipwrecks. He found over 60 shipwrecks in, a real, in his real life, was his hobby. Boats going back 500 years ago. Now, the sun who is going on in maintaining Numa, they still today look for further for shipwrecks. For the moment, they look for one who must have sang 1580, George Washington. It's amazing. We said, okay, we would like, in his honor, to create the watch who also looks like being in the water for 500 years. There was still. So we went back and been working to stonewash the case. To match the color, it's stone watch, right temperature, the right stones, the right qualitative approach with what you start first. To match the colors, stone wash, fold the clasp, an enemy. <laughs> How can you stone wash a fold the clasp? And in the first year, we had 80% ethical damage. And the bracelet was much more difficult for us yeah. than the case. And then finally, technically, we made it. And then the color was not matching. Headache. <laughs> and we pushed, we pushed, we pushed, and at the end, we did it. But now, on the back case with the loop, in the relief, you have every single bow. Mm. I've cast the fat. And this is something which you need to touch. And this is amazing artwork. And in the middle, you have the logo of Numa. And this is a special edition where every watch sold globally, we contribute to this organization. I said, as his son is going on, and they really need money. And just fortunately, because looking for a boat, they go for weeks mm. like this. So, and they go down with sonars, you know, and just one of the recent trip, the son told me they lost the sonar at $50,000, huh? When something happens. Mm -hmm. So it's worthwhile to support the history, what they do. And also here in regard of his father, 
uh, legacy. The date, the 15th of July, 1931, his birthday, mm -hmm. slips out in red. Oh, yeah. And then the people said again, oh, limited edition, limited edition. I said, no, this is a special edition because he deserved to become a part of our collection. Okay. The target is as long as possible mm -hmm. to contribute Numa and not 200 pieces, 100 pieces. There's not enough support for Numa. So, and the market reacted very well on this. And also then the dial, the compass. Mm -hmm. and, and we said, oh, you could also put it on a rubber strap. And people would have been happy already. You want to make a metal bracelet to make a full watch that it looks like being in the water, like the boat for 500 years. Okay, so to all the Korean watch enthusiastic, collectors, watch fans, you have no idea that how happy we are to have landed here. Because your market, your knowledge is extensive. We know how far, how educated you are. And it's definitely time. Some of you, they already know Doxa, this we know, but also to bring it further to a next generation. And the culture habits here, uh, which at the end are not so different to the ones we carry in Switzerland. Um, this product is really fulfilling the local demand. Um, I'm just happy to be here and I wish you a lot of pleasure with your dogs or watches on your wrist in the future.